Today, I'll show you how to whip up these adorable bandana baby bibs that any new little buckaroo would love to have. They're super quick to sew together and super simple, and I'll show you how to do it next. The things you're going to need to make these adorable bandana baby bibs are a button-up shirt, now you don't have to use a button up shirt, but I'm all about upcycling, repurposing, saving the planet. So that's what I'm gonna to use today, but feel free to use any cotton print that you want. You're also gonna need some flannel. I'll be using this white here today, but if you want these to be reversible, go ahead and use a print. And just like the front of the bib, you don't have to use flannel. You just want some sort of absorbent material you could use an old towel, fleece, or even a cut up sweatshirt. You're also gonna need some snaps. I got this kit at Walmart. It comes with this little plastic thing and the snap pieces. And let me tell you, it's a piece of junk. They do have a more expensive kit that you use a hammer to attach your snaps with. So I'd go ahead and grab that. I have these, so I'm just trying to get rid of them. But if you don't have snaps, you could also just use Velcro. You're going to need your ironing board and iron and sewing machine with thread. Let's get started. You all know how much I love to make cardboard patterns. So the first thing that I'm going to do is make a pattern. The first step is you want to draw a 17 inch line. Just like that. Now we want to find the midpoint of that 17 inch line, which would be eight and a half, and make a little mark. Next, you just want to line up your ruler with that mark there, and make sure that your line is straight down here. And we're gonna draw a line. Just like that, it really doesn't matter how long this line is, I just drew a really long line because our next step is from this point, we're going to line up our ruler here at zero and we're going to move our ruler until our 12 inch mark, which is right here, hits our line and draw a line. Just like that, and we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. We're going to line up essentially our zero of our ruler on our point right here, and we're going to move our ruler until our 12 inch mark right here hits our line. So now we should have an isosceles triangle. I think that's what it's called. That's 17 inches here at the bottom, and each of these sidelines are 12 inches long. Now you just want to glue this to some cardboard. I always like to use the tacky spray and cut it out. And that's what I have right here. So now I'm just going to label my template. That way I can use this whenever I want. Now I'm just going to set my template off to the side for a minute. And I'm going to grab my button-up shirt. Like I said, you don't have to use a button-up shirt. But I like to repurpose, recycle, and reuse whenever I can. And I think it would be great to take a bunch of Daddy's old shirts and make a bunch of these bibs up for his little buckaroo. 
Next, I'm just going to take this to my ironing board, give it a good press to make sure there's no wrinkles or creases. Now that we have this nice and ironed, you just want to take your template here and cut out one triangle from your shirt. Just like that. Now you just want to take your absorbent backing material, in my case I'm using flannel, and cut out a triangle also. And I've already done that right here. So the next thing we're going to do is take my flannel piece here. And if you do have a print on your flannel because you want these to be reversible, make sure that your print is facing up. Now you just want to take your shirt material. In my case, this one really doesn't have a front or a back. But if yours did, you want to lay it so the pretty side is facing down. So your back piece is facing up, and your top piece will be facing down. In my case, neither one of these fabrics have that, so it doesn't matter. You want to line them up as best as you can. I like to flip it over and make sure that my flannel goes all the way to the edges because sometimes it has a tendency to scrunch up. And then we're just going to pin all the way around, leaving a 3 inch opening at the top here. And it's a good idea to put a lot of pins in this because it does tend to slip around. So I have my 3 inch opening here. I then like to put one in each of the points and then I'll just put two more here at the top and three along the sides. So now I'm just going to take this over to my sewing machine. I did change my foot to a walking foot and I'm going to sew all the way around, leaving my 3 inch opening right here with a half inch seam allowance. Alright guys, I'm over here at my sewing machine. Like I said, I did change my foot to a walking foot. When we turn this inside out and top stitch it, it really helps on the corners here. I'm going to back stitch at the beginning and the end. And with the quarter inch seam allowance, just start sewing. When you get to these corners right here, it could be a little bit tricky. So what I'm going to do is just eyeball it. When I think the thread is about a quarter inch away, I'm going to stop, put my needle down, raise my presser foot, and turn the project. And just keep sewing. Now when you get down to this bottom point, it's a little bit easier. So I pretty much put my pin halfway between that angle. So I'm just going to sew up to the pin, stop with my needle down, raise my presser foot, and spin. And continue on. Alright guys, I'm coming up to my final pin here, leaving my 3 inch opening. I'm just going to back stitch at the end here.
All right, guys, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to clip our corners here. I'm going to clip the tip. Make sure you don't go through your thread here. And I'm also going to take a little bit off the sides here to reduce some bulk. Now for this bottom point, all I'm going to do is just clip the tip. Now the next thing to do is you just want to turn your bib right side out. Now using a bone folder, I just like to make sure that my points here are nice and sharp. But since we did clip that extra fabric away, you want to be very careful that you don't poke through. Now we're just going to take this over to our ironing board, making sure our opening here is tucked in, and give it a good press. Just like that. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this over to our sewing machine, and with the eighth inch seam allowance, we're going to top stitch all the way around, back stitching at the beginning and the end, and making sure we get this opening closed. All right, guys, so I'm going to back stitch at the beginning and the end and top stitch all the way around with an eighth inch seam allowance. Now, these corners can be pretty tricky, but if you have a walking foot, it really helps grab that fabric and pull it through. So now we're just going to put our snaps on. So this little kit just happens to be a four piece set here. So you're going to need the male snap with the top piece, the female snap with the top piece, and your little crimper thing here. The first thing I'm going to do is grab one of these parts with the pokey part on it. I don't know what it's called. And the female piece. And I'm going to stick it here in my little contraption. Now on this little contraption here, there's a diagram. So it tells you to put the parts with the pokies, pokey side up on this side. And then the female part with the flat side facing down. Now I'm just going to eyeball it here. I want mine about right here. So I'm going to squeeze this as hard as I can between the fabric. Now usually I have to go back with a hammer to make sure it's really good and secure. So it should look something like this. Now you want to do the same thing with your male piece on the other side. However, our female piece is facing the back fabric, so we're going to flip this around and have our male piece, the one with the snap on it, facing up. And now our bandana baby bib is all finished. And like I said, if you don't want to use snaps, because this gadget here is a piece of junk, go ahead and just use some sew-on Velcro. It'll make your life a lot easier. Now I also went ahead and made a few more using some different shirts. And I think they turned out just as cute. 
These make the perfect gift for any baby shower, of course. And any new little cowboy, or cowgirl for that matter, would love to have these. I hope you give this project a try. If you like my videos and want to see more of my videos, go down below and hit the big red subscribe button and give this video a big thumbs up. If you have a question about this video or would just like to leave a suggestion for an upcoming video, leave me a comment. Feel free to share these videos across your social medias. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.